Welcome to season two of the NGO Whisperer Show. My name is Caroline Ohinde. I am the founder of the NGO Whisperer. We are a consulting business that helps nonprofits raise funds so they can successfully impact people's lives. In season two of the NGO Whisperer Show, we will connect you with subject matter experts to address questions that our audience and our clients have raised over the last few months. Joining us today is David Lale from Oxford. David Lale is the Chief Executive Officer of Oxford HR. David, welcome to the show. Thanks, Caroline. Lovely to meet you, even virtually. Thank you so much. David, in this day um, and time when we're faced with the global pandemic of COVID-19, we're all working from home to prevent the spread and save lives. How best can one work from home? In my experience working with various nonprofits all over the world, especially those in the close limited setting, many people have mentioned to me that they are struggling to work from home. I know from our collaboration and with the work that you do at Oxford HR and the team of consultants that you have, and also the fact that you are one of the contributors of the NGO Whisper magazine that your team and you, of course, are very much, very much uh, helpful to people when it comes to supporting them with human resources issues. So what is your take on this? But before we go to that, tell us, who is Oxford HR? What do you do? Well, that's a, a great uh, opening question. Thank you. It's lovely to have the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Uh, Oxford HR has uh, been around actually uh, for uh, since 1995, uh, so it's just coming up for its 25th anniversary this year, uh, which of course we may all be celebrating indoors and away from each other in the way that things stand at the moment. Uh, Oxford HR was set up as one of the first executive uh, search agencies operating specifically in the development sector by a group of NGO uh, professionals. And the business has worked over those last 25 years with NGOs large and small, with some of the multilateral banks and the consultancies operating in the sector, a whole variety of agents, all with different cultures, different uh, requirements, different stresses and strains, and uh, recruited generally at a leadership level. So chief executive, director level and board level, that's where our main focus is. So it's actually a huge privilege to see and work with some of uh, the most uh, active and uh, profound change-making organizations and individuals in uh, civic society. As I say, for me, it feels like a huge honor and a great pleasure. Thank, uh, we you. Have, yeah. Thank you so much. And I know Oxford HR is based in Oxford, United Kingdom. That's where you're based right now, isn't it? Indeed, that's where, that's where we started life and still where we have our headquarters. We now have an office in Amsterdam and London and Nairobi and uh, are looking to open uh, later this year or perhaps early next year uh, in Bangkok and in Australasia and the US. And congratulations on your 25 years of operating and supporting organizations all over the world. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. It's a pleasure. So back to our topic for today. How can organizations support people to work effectively from their homes? Maybe we can start by identifying the challenges that people mm. face. I think those challenges often fall into two broad categories. And obviously some organizations will have already confronted these over the years. They may be well set up for the staff working from home, but I think there are two broad categories. There are the practical, logistical aspects of working from home, and then there's the psychological, emotional aspects. And 
And you never really know which one's going to uh, predominate in any one given situation, but it's certainly true that you have to look at both of them to really think through how this is going to work. So on the practical, it might be about the space that people have got, the peace that people might be able to access or not access, the access to their colleagues, how's that going to work, their broadband setup, how's that going to work, what sort of access do they have to resources that they might have in the office, what about security, you know, there's that range of practical issues that anyone thinking about working from home is going to have to come across. And then on the other hand, there's the psychological aspects, because none of us really know how we'll respond, even those of us who do, perhaps like you and I, work from home a fair amount, to suddenly being confronted with your family all around you all of the time, and how that's going to work, or how that it's going to feel not to have that routine of going to the office and, and you know, the water cooler moment, uh, the conversations, the kind of easy, informal aspects of working with a group of people. Um, working like this through video conferencing platforms is just different. You lose that immediacy and intimacy that comes from face-to-face uh, -face conversations. And then, of course, there's also the you know, psychological aspects of routine. How do we cope with this whole new routine? How do we delineate between being at work and being at home? How we dress, um, how we make sure that we get good breaks or eat well. So, as I say, even for those of us who are used to working from home most of the time, to have it suddenly forced upon us feels very different, I think and it requires a rethink for many, many people and many organizations. And for many organizations, they struggle with supporting people because, as you have said, those who are not used to working remotely struggle, but also those who are used to working remotely struggle because the period um, through which you are separated physically from your colleagues and the water cooler moments or the, rem or, or the commute from work to, you know, office, office to work. And of, obviously when you're at home, I've had people saying that, you know, there are issues that they are facing, the, the, the distance between the kitchen and their desk is so short that they find <laughs> themselves more in the kitchen area. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I think well, the, challenging. Yeah? it is challenging. It is challenging. I think that's that, that point, yes, about delineation between home and work is, uh, is really critical, about setting up some sort of routine that works for you. And, and the trouble with all of this is you can't be too prescriptive because, of course, it partly depends on our personality types. Yeah. Uh, if we're quite introverts and actually we like our own company, um, then this might be an ideal uh, time of life uh, for you. Uh, and I, you know, I've heard many authors being interviewed about this kind of enforced lock-in saying, well, this is what I do, you know, I'm, I'm never happier. In fact, my, my struggle here is that there are too many noises and too many voices elsewhere in the house around me now. I, I want that peace and quiet. So some of us in, in business or in the NGO sector, um, you know, having that space to think and reflect, that sort of creative, quiet space uh, can be really important. And, and so some people who've been homeworking in the past will have used it for that, and that will have been taken away from them. So trying to find an opportunity where you can actually still have that creative peace and space uh, in this situation is difficult, but desirable. Absolutely. And now you're bringing in something else, which is not really a challenge, but a blessing that comes to it. The, 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 the pros and the cons of working from home obviously exist. And so looking at it from, uh, you know, the two sides of the coin and saying, as much as there are challenges to it, there's also the good side of it. And we need yes. to look at it in a whole, as a whole thing, you know, from a holistic point of view. Yes. So what are the other benefits of working from home that you have experienced personally right now? Um, mm. You know, you are also working from home. Your team is working from home. Are there positive things that people have said because of working from home, I have achieved one, two, three things? Yes, I think, uh, and it's hard to perhaps disassociate this period of working from home because we're all in a sort of enforced lockdown globally 
from just working from home per se. And perhaps we can look at those as two separate situations. I think looking at the former as a result of COVID-19, that there is this creative moment. It is without a doubt stressful and lots and lots of uh, uh, changes in circumstances that people are having to come to terms with. But also there's an opportunity there for organizations to rethink the way that they are delivering their services. So I see one of the advantages of this sort of enforced lockdown period is, is as a potentially a time for innovation for people to be able to um, think differently not just about how they're working and how they do their day-to-day -day work and how perhaps you know certain aspects of working from home really suit them but actually how the organization works and how it actually delivers its services and relates to its beneficiaries and its funders uh, and you know the opportunity there for organizations to innovate and come up with new ways of working I think is definitely a, a bonus and an advantage. Might be hard to see it at the moment for many organizations just struggling to keep people yes. uh, with sufficient work to do. So I don't mean to belittle in any way the, the enormity of the challenge and, and for many people, the tragedy that's in front of us. But in any situation where there's significant change, there are also opportunities there. And I think creativity and innovation is definitely one of them at an organizational level as well as an individual level. Absolutely. So that's the sort of COVID-19 benefits of working from home such as they are. But I think individually working from home, I think there's also a, an opportunity to actually work on projects that perhaps you just don't get the chance to do in the office. You're in the office, we're always disturbed. There are people walk past your door and pop in and talk to you or uh, email or email you constantly, which, you know, when you're working from home, you can actually take some time to switch that noise off and focus on projects that perhaps you don't have the time or attention to give to uh, when you're actually in the office. I think that's got to be one of the advantages. Absolutely. And I think sometimes from a creative point of view, just a change of scene is a good stimulus as well to help you think differently about work problems to perhaps get them in perspective. Mm -hmm. So going forward from an individual perspective of looking at the lockdown as an issue and now embracing it, how can organization help people specifically to think that way? Because not everyone is very positive, uh, I must okay. say, at this point. No, I think that's fair. And as I've said earlier, I think that for many people involved in significant challenges, they may, of course, have an existential anxiety about their own health or the health of people that they love and care for around them. Uh, they may have concerns about uh, their career and their job security um, when they see uh, the stock markets tanking and uh, economies around the world shrinking. Uh, so whilst, whilst we're in this kind of little bubble of innovation and creativity, there's also all of that going on uh, for many people, which is very hard to sometimes move beyond and can cause a great deal of anxiety. Yeah. And I suppose I would take one step back. We've talked very much about the individuals and how individuals can perhaps respond in a creative and open way. And, and I think the opportunities for collaboration are enormous in this period of time. But there's also a leadership uh, responsibility here, I think, as well. Um, and a question that I would be thinking about is how can leaders step up to make sure not only that their own well-being is being looked after, but also that their teams are getting the support that they need. Um, one of the things uh, that we do at Oxford HR is offer coaching and facilitation to leadership uh, where we can, so let's say we've appointed somebody into a chief exec role, we might provide them with 100 days of coaching uh, to help them settle in uh, into their new role. But we're in a new world order at the moment, so that, that responsibility for leaders to coach and facilitate their teams or to bring outsiders in like us to help support and facilitate their teams i think is actually really important how do you for instance if you're running a virtual leadership meeting a team meeting how do you know how everyone's doing you can spend a few minutes asking the question but as i've said there might be some very serious um, anxiety levels around the room that as we said earlier it's very hard to pick up sometimes over a virtual meeting that you would pick up much more quickly and intuitively if you were in the room with them. Yes. So um, you need sometimes some, some expert help to actually uh, identify some of those issues 
and create a space where people can uh, share and talk about them in a, in a constructive way. So I think there's also um, here a leadership responsibility for leaders to be thinking about what more can they be doing to really uh, support their teams through this time on the psychological and emotional level, practically making sure they've got the kit, the good broadband connection, health and safety, you know, in a sense, HR is kind of famous for all of that stuff. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> laying down the rules and regulations and a good policy on how you use your laptop. Uh, but that really doesn't even scratch the surface of what uh, when they're working from home. So actually, I think the psychological, emotional contract with your team uh, really comes to the fore at moments like this. And, and perhaps there's something about your own leadership style, of course. Uh, if you're used to bringing everyone together in the morning and having a sort of agile daily 15 minute stand up session with them, it can be quite difficult to translate that to a, a suddenly a new working environment where everyone's on the back of the screen still wearing their pajamas. You know, so trying to trying to change the way that you deliver your leadership style is quite challenging, especially for those of us who are getting older and we're used to having sort of one approach. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. new, new ways of working. So with the leaders stepping up and having more of an individualized approach to addressing issues that their staff members face as opposed to just sending an email or having yes. a once off you know, kind of check-in meeting it's really important what i'm getting from you it's really important to step up and be a leader not just to the groups but also to individuals in Indeed. your team Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Karen. I think it's all about the listening skills more than the talking. I think many leaders uh, think it's all about how motivating they are and how much they're kind of rallying the troops in a moment like this. And actually, sometimes the best skills that you have are your listening skills, really attentively uh, and accurately hearing what's being said sort of beneath the conversation. We, we know, we all know that most of our communication is non-verbal. Uh, and we lose a lot of that through this kind of platform. So just being able to pay attention to the signals uh, that are coming from the leadership team and spend time uh, with them to support them one-to-one, uh, -one, I think is incredibly important. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you have any resources regarding coaching and mentorship? I know you provide support to the organizations you work with. However, there are other organizations that might not be your clients right now and sure. they are watching and they are wondering where can we get resources um, that would help our people we have uh, a great uh, group of organizational psychologists that we work with who work with clients on a one-to-one -one basis so if anybody wants to get in touch we can put them in touch with somebody for a absolutely you know free chat just to kind of scope out what the issues are and, and take it from there and yes of course we can point you to some online resources that are, that are good for this kind of thing too wonderful thank you so much to all our viewers all the resources that oxford hr recommend are actually on right now if you look at the bottom of the screen you will see all the websites and links to the resources they are available for you to reach out to and also the contacts of key people at Oxford HR because we are here for you to support you so as we come to the end of this show uh, I would like to give David Lel the opportunity to speak to anyone who is going through any challenges from your experience uh, as an HR uh, practitioner and uh, leader of many, 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 many organizations that are looking up to you. Um, people would like to hear from you from your heart. Speak to them. Thank you, and we'd love to hear from you. And I think that um, we're all working in extraordinary times, uh, and I'm sure we'll look back on this and. Uh, have a view on, on how we all did, basically. Uh, so I think that it's challenging for everybody. And I think one of the great things that's come out that I'm hearing from clients is uh, the extent to which they've been surprised and impressed uh, by the people around them, the, their ability to cope and ability to step up in circumstances like this. It's very heartwarming. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you making time to speak with us today, David, and anyone else who is looking for support for your organizations when it comes to um, recruiting or hiring of leaders in your team. Oxford HR, as you have heard, works all over the world. They have offices, of course, their headquarters is based in Oxford in the United Kingdom. They have an office in Amsterdam, in Nairobi, and soon to have offices in Asia, I believe, uh, in Australia, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong, and also in the US. Correct. You need any type of support, even during this time of COVID-19, I know many organizations might want to reach out for support we've had about their coaching and mentorship programs that they offer to executives they're here for you reach out to them thank you so much david pleasure ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining us today watching the ngo whisperer show with david lane focusing on issues around remote working Remember, it's all about connecting people, raising funds, and impacting lives. From all of us here at the NGO Whisperer, be safe, stay at home, and save lives.